there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. Lord, let us pray this morning for all the mothers and what they're going through, what they've been through, and what they're about to go through. Amen. This morning we uh, lift up the mothers to God, and I want to specify something, the godly mothers. There's nothing like them. If you've never been around and experienced one, you've been missing out all these years. Amen? Because there's nothing like a godly mother. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this blessed day. You give us to glorify you, to lift you up, to praise you, and love you, and honor you. And Lord, there's just nothing else on the face of this earth or anywhere else, Lord, that can even measure up to you any at all. Lord, you bring joy in our heart. You bring the love in our heart. And you give us mothers on this special day, Lord, to lift up to you. And let your light shine each and every day through thee. And I pray that we can receive your goodness as you as you give it, Lord. Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, my passage comes out of Proverbs 31. I searched the Bible this morning. God led me here. I ventured off a couple of times. And he, only, he led me right on back to here again. So this is the place I need to be. Amen. Proverbs 31. We're going to start in verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband is safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wood wool, excuse me, and flax and work, works willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth forth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to the, her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. Verse 19 says, She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the, the staff. Mm. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself covering with, of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Those last two verses are talking about Jesus Christ. Living on, in this woman's heart we're talking about here in Proverbs. Amen. She puts forth the blessings that God gives her each and every day. A godly woman. There's a big difference, people, in a woman and a godly woman. A big difference. The godly woman wants to stay home and nurture her family and take care of business. But she's got to have a man, somebody to stand with her. She can't do it by herself. Amen? She can do it with God. God can handle it. God can understand it. God can help her. But the Bible said, God will make you him or her or helper is what I'm trying to say here this morning. When God created man, he said, I will make him a helper. Praise God. Not the sole person in the relationship. Not the one that goes at it. A helper. What is a helper? Back when I worked construction, it was a journeyman and a helper. Amen. Anywhere in the field of this world that we're living in, 
It don't matter what field you in that you work in, there are helpers. It's just like the woman. She's a helper to the man. She takes care of business in the household. She takes care of business because the Bible says she is weaker than the man. Oh, I got chills all over just then because I know I'd hit some people right upside the head. We have to trust and believe this whole Bible. We can't pick and choose in here. The woman is weaker than the man. She is the helper of the man. She is the helper, people. And we should treat her as such because she is so tender. She is so loving. She is so gracious. Amen. Let's talk about this woman. Get up in the middle of the night and look out for her child. Look out for her children. Make sure they're fed. Make sure they're clothed. But not only with linen. Not only with, with material. Clothed with the living sacrifice of God, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord have mercy. I'm back back in the day. Yeah. I tell you, it's just so amazing how back in the day everything was so good, so pure. We got up, slicked our hair down, went to church. Amen. 90% of the people nowadays could give a care less about God, religion, or anything else. Amen. Women are a helper to the man. But first we have a got to have a godly man for her to follow. <coughs> yes, I said follow. I know I'm going to get me some I'm ready for it. Bring it on. Bash me. Tell me how bad the sermon was. Tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me all that. And I'll open the book and show you exactly where it's at. Amen? We have to follow God in every aspect. Come on now. I post pictures all the time of the old times. Back when women stayed at home and back when women was able and had a good man to follow, which was godly. And I want to tell you what, right now. A woman that is godly, a woman that is following Jesus Christ, the one that is going by the book, the godly woman is at home waiting her on her, got supper cooked for the man that comes home. I think what happened to this nation, what happened to these people, what happened to these women is because they got greedy. They wanted more than what they had instead of being satisfied and letting God handle it. The Bible said, I will make him a helper. We are all equal in God's eyes, right? Amen. Amen. But we have specific tasks that he wants us to do each and every day for his will, for his plan, for the, the things that he needs done each and every day. Come on now. You might say I'm old-fashioned. I don't care. You might say I'm wrong. I don't care. I'm just going by what the book says. A godly woman, people. That's what Proverbs 31 is talking about. If you don't believe this passage... You can't believe the whole Bible. If you don't believe what this Bible is saying right here, you can't believe the whole Bible. How in the world can you follow the Bible when you're tearing the pages out to fit you? We got to keep the pages in to fit God. That's what we got to do this morning. I want to tell you what, back in the day, Lord have mercy, back in the day, I worked Wife well, stayed home, raised kids. I remember at times she'd get up in the morning, she'd go in there making them biscuits, and that grease would be so cold it squeezing up through her hands that they would turn pink. But she was making a biscuit for them kids to go to school, have breakfast in the morning. She always took care of us. Even when she didn't have a, a true relationship with God, she knew God just like I did. 
but I'm talking about a true relationship where she was still following God's plan because she knew that's what God's will was. Sit up and talk about we can't make it on one income. How in the world do you figure that? I'm going, I'm going to get me a man, and I'm going to divorce him, and then I'm going to lay up on the government. Is that a godly woman? This Bible right here is talking about she is not afraid of the snow in her household, for all her household are clothed with Jesus Christ. Amen. If we would stop and think about that situation, I tell you, my marriage, my life, this whole house turned upside down when my wife went to work. I got the feeling inadequate. You know what I mean? I got the feeling that I didn't measure up sometimes. Because I want to tell you what, she was in that nursing field, she was making sometimes more than I was. We tried every situation. We tried everything known to man. She had her bank account, I had mine. That didn't work. Because one was spending more than the other than they thought. And the greed set in. And it was always she had to go to work when I didn't have to work. I had a day off and she had to go to work. You know what? I'm, it's always it's confusion when we don't follow God's will, God's plan, now. We all, I'm going to say this right now, all, everybody on the face of this earth needs a mate. Needs somebody to fall back on. Need somebody. I'm talking about your wife now. If you got kids, it's a different story. If they if if they for you, if they there for you, and you don't feel like you need a companion, well, that's your business. But I tell you what, I don't know what I do without mine. I wake up sometimes and tremble and just thinking about what what I do if I lost her, because she has been my rock. And I pray that I have been hers. There's been a lot of times when I didn't follow God. And there's been a lot of times when she didn't follow me. First and foremost, we got to have someone godly to follow. Amen? Someone that God is leading for us to follow. Throughout the whole Bible, somebody had somebody to follow because they were godly. They were they in tune with God. Why do you go to church every Sunday? To listen to the preacher, right? To listen to someone that you follow because he is in tune with Jesus Christ. And God is using him as a vessel for you to follow. Now, I didn't say make him the... the there's only one preacher, and that's Jesus Christ. I'm talking about somebody with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. My mama, she'd work out in the field right beside, right beside my, my daddy when it was harvest time. Because she always said, plant it and one day we will harvest. Plant it. I can hear it just plain as day, her out in that cotton field dragging that cotton sack saying, yeah, she drove a cotton, she pulled a cotton sack. She said, when you plant it, we will harvest. Amen. And she planted that in me. I remember back in the day, I'm going to stop there for a minute. Back in the day, we, it's, a, it's a joke around here. I tell my wife, we used to work out in the cotton field. Holy cotton, first one thing to another, you know, with all the kids and, and the wife and daddy be out there hoeing cotton or picking cotton or something or other. It was always cotton. And I looked up at daddy one day and I said, Lord, have mercy. It's bad picking this cotton, but wouldn't it be even worse if we had to pick them soybeans? <laughs> and he laughed and he said, you know, it's always something a little bit worse if you go to thinking about what you're doing. But I tell you, we'd go in, 
go in for dinner and I can hear that old guiding light coming on now. I can hear that old story coming on. I don't know what you want. It might have been a world turn. I don't know one of them. But that music be playing. Mama have him potatoes and the skidlet in there. Frying up, boy, and I hear frying, and it smells so good. That aroma coming through that house. We had them old box fans going back then, you know. And that aroma coming through the house, and we'd have them breakfast biscuits sitting on the stove. We'd put uh, some of them old smothered damn potatoes with onions on them, you know, and that old biscuit. I didn't need nothing else, people. I look forward to that meal each and every day because Mama put her love into it. It made it, she made it so good because that love was in there. And I know probably y'all can remember back at certain meals that Mama put extra love in, you know what I mean? And my wife does that right now. I can tell when she puts some love in it because it tastes so much better, amen? But it's a joke now. I mean, I come in at dinner. What we gonna have? Biscuit and tater. And she go to lay. There's nothing like a godly woman. And I thought about my wife when it's verse 19. It says, she layeth her hands to the spindle. My wife loves to sew. She very rarely gets time to do it because she has so much other stuff to do, but I can hear that old sewing machine there just running. I think about back in the day when Mama was patching my blue jeans or patching my breeches, you know. It's just on and on about your mother's love. What she has given you. She gives you life. A mother is special. Jesus Christ can tell you, amen? Because God put forth a woman to bring him into this world. That's how special a mother is. That's how special a woman is. How can we walk around each and every day saying that woman needs to go to work? I tell you, I think, and I believe, and I know because I read this book, a man ain't much of a man if he makes his wife work. There I said, he ought to be able to defend for her himself instead of putting her out there in the workforce. The only reason a person, a man, don't have a job is because of his own fault, because of jobs that he don't want to do. Come on now, I've been there, done that. Man called me up. I've been working construction for four or five years. Man called me up and said, I want you to go to work for me on the farm. I said, no, ain't no way in this world I'm going to work construction. I just about starved to death because I turned that job down. But that was back in the day. That's before. Back in the day, there wasn't no jobs around, but nowadays there are. We can pick and choose nowadays, right? My wife working night shift over at that paper mill. I'd go out and get in that car after she got out, and that seat would be soaking wet with sweat. And I was sitting up there talking about I couldn't find a job. Are you kidding me? That was sorry. That was lazy. That was no account. Making my wife work when the Bible truly says that she's the helper. Help her. I mean, we done put it at the, took it to the extreme, people. Help me make a living? Are you kidding me? Now, day and time. You may not live in this mansion. You may not lay a half a three car garage. You may not have all this hoopla that you have. But a man can make it. A man can raise kids. I am a, my, my grandpa, I don't remember how many kids was in that family. I want to say nine or ten that he raised, and his wife never worked. Yeah, well, preacher, that was back in the day. No, it don't matter what day it was. It don't matter when it was. He got off in his tail, and he went to work to provide for his family because he loved his wife, 
and his wife was a godly person because she stayed home and made sure the kids was raised up. Amen? Now, we thought we was doing right. My wife said, when, when the kids get grown, I'm going to work. I said, well, I'm a, that's all good. Well, you know that don't work either. Even when the kids are grown and gone, then you're sitting there by yourself, you and your wife, and y'all don't know each other because y'all had kids all your life. And y'all have to get to know each other all over again. Hmm. I just, I just don't understand how I was so foolish back in the day. And I tell you, a lot of it was lazy. I ain't going to set up in tonight. I was lazy. And a few, among a few other things. Work on the farm so I can lay up in the winter. Work construction so I come home draw unemployment. And then finally, I turned 40 years old and I went to work at a, at a plant down at about 30 miles from him. Drove back and forth every day. But I grew up, people, and I had a steady job. And we prospered. Why? Because I started and I, and I, God, I want a better relationship with you. God, I need you. God, I want you to be with me. And I found God. And we, the wife and I, had a relationship with God and things started to move. Started, things started to prosper. Things start, the greediness was gone. And we were able to live together. We were able to know each other. And I want to tell you what, that's been the last five, probably four or five years. Prior to that, I was religious. Prior to that, we didn't know God like we do now. Amen? Why? Because I didn't talk to God. I didn't listen to God. I didn't even know when he was talking. And when he did talk, I didn't know it was him. You ever been there? Getting back to the one. What I call my mom. I guess that's what my kids call her, call my mom. Amen. Mom. I get tickled sometimes about how my son says mom. You know, mama won't take care of you. Mama won't be there for you. And he's just doing a fragment. Kids do fragments of what their parents give them. It's just a fragment that they can give back. Just think about it. 